In their reflective papers, the majority of students identified ways in which the collaborative fan fiction task enhanced their language learning at the lexical level. In particular, several pointed out that mimicking the language of the Hobbit required them to understand and use words that were more old-fashioned or for formal than they were used to using. As one student wrote, this writing activity has influenced my language skills. During this project, I've been able to expand my repertoire of English words, which are not so commonly used in everyday English anymore. Lexical development was identified by a range of students, including those who identified as more proficient in English, and found that imitating the writing style in The Hobbit allowed them to expand their vocabulary, particularly with respect to adjectives and adverbs, which they found characteristic of Tolkien's writing. Some students who identified as non-readers of fiction described how the task in particular led to the development of vocabulary or grammar knowledge useful for creative writing. I'm not that much of a reader of fiction compared to others, and I feel that my vocabulary have increased when it comes to creative writing. Beyond discrete vocabulary item learning, more than a third of all students felt that the collaborative writing task improved their ability to write in English. Most of them emphasized development in the area of creative writing in particular because they had little to no experience with creative writing, while others identified an improvement in overall writing fluency. As one student said, After a short while, the writing became very fluent, and I did not have to think too hard before writing. In addition, a few self-identified weaker writers described an overarching improvement in their writing accuracy, which they attributed to the peer feedback they received during the collaborative writing process. Careful reading to accurately capture the voice of their particular character was commented on by more than half the students. For some students, this took the form of trying to capture the character's idiosyncratic speech style, which included a fondness for riddles, but also grammatically incorrect speech, which we can see an example of here on the screen. Another student wrote this about his character. I really tried to make Gollum's language from the movies work together with the features specific to the book. He does speak grammatically incorrect, and that was a bit tricky to make work as of making him understood. The student went on to point out one of the advantages of the assignment, though. I have not worked in this way before with reading and writing where you tend to go back to your book like a dictionary to highlight special features from your character. One of the questions I'm often asked about classroom fanfiction is how good it is or how it compares to the fanfiction fans write online. To investigate this, I did a keyword analysis, a type of corpus-based analysis that looks for keywords that appear with unusual frequency in one group of text compared to another. One can also look for negative keywords, or words that are unusually infrequent in a corpus compared to another. In order to do this, I compiled a corpus of online fanfiction from the fanfiction site Arc of Our Own, AO3, that was written during the same period as my students' fanfiction, was similar in length and rating, and was a similar genre. In other words, no explicit stories, no romance, or no alternate universe stories. Among the keywords found in the classroom fanfiction were third-person plural pronouns, we, our, us. This was a reflection of the fact that classroom fanfiction was written by multiple authors and conveyed multiple perspectives, and thus plural pronouns were common. Certain character names were also keywords, including several dwarves who were not as commonly referenced in the online fanfiction. In addition, keywords included reference to a number of different beings found in Middle-earth, including dwarves, goblins, wizards, and elves. In contrast, the negative keywords, the words that were particularly uncommon in my students' fanfiction compared to the online fanfiction, included third-person singular pronouns, she, her, his, him, kinship terms, character names, and contracted forms. Taken together, these negative keywords pointed to a difference in character focus, including a focus on individual characters, including an original female character only found in the Hobbit films and not in the novel, a greater emphasis on family or family relationships, 
and more reference to certain elves as opposed to dwarves. However, most notably, the contracted forms, when investigated in the corpus, typically occurred in dialogue, revealing that classroom fan fiction, perhaps because of the assignment focus on character perspective, had much less dialogue than the online fan fiction. A follow-up interview with a focus group of fans and non-fans in one particularly eager group who called themselves the Dream Team also pointed to another major difference between the classroom fan fiction and the online fan fiction. According to one student, B, fanfics that get really popular, they kind of answer to some kind of fantasy that people have about the characters, or something they really want to explore, or they create an alternate universe. We didn't have anything like that, really. I mean, I think ours was very kind of very much like the book in a way. So maybe it wasn't as exciting as some other fan fiction because it wasn't innovating in that way. We were trying to make it look like it could actually be a part of the book. So I think that's the difference as well between what we did and we planned and what's on fan fiction forums. In other words, the instructions for the classroom fan fiction did not allow students to be quite as innovative as actual fan fiction.